Hi everybody, this is Julie with Stitches of Love Quilting. I'm here to show you how I do my binding on a little piece such as this tiny little mug rug. I still use the same size binding that I do on my regular quilts. This is uh, cut at two and a half, so folded it's one and a quarter. To start my binding, I do fold it 45 degrees over the initial tail of the binding and then I press it and I draw with a Pigma pen on this line, which you can see I kind of missed right there, exactly. But you want to try to draw exactly in the line, the fold. This helps you when you later when you go to sew it together. So now you have it folded. I like to use some starch when I press my bindings. I'll use spray starch, uh, either best press or just the dollar can of starch you get at the grocery store. So what you want to do with these, because it is such a tight area to work in, I usually position my binding so that it's at least halfway up the point, yes that is, but I don't sew. I start sewing down here only about an inch up from this. And oh my goodness, I would like to use my little patchwork foot. This was my open toe foot that I use when I'm doing my blanket stitch. So let me change this foot really quickly. And I do have two different colors of thread on the machine right now. Um, I was sewing on buttons a moment earlier, so I was using red thread in the top. So at any rate, I have my machine set. I'm going to stitch it about, I'm going to start stitching about an inch from the bottom. And so make a couple little stitches here. Uh oh, stop. Raise your feet, dogs. Are we filming this? Mm -hmm. We still are, everybody. After oh. buttons, raise your feet, dog. <laughs> <laughs> yes, always remember to raise your feet, dog, after you do your buttons on. So your buttons on. So I'm going to pretend and know for sure that that's pretty much lock that stitch in place, but let's just take a couple little stitches forward and then we'll go a couple stitches back. Okay. So now we're going to go forward again to the edge. We want to go, we're using a quarter inch seam, so we want to go a quarter inch from the edge and then we're going to lift our foot all this cuteness in the way. And we're going to pivot. I don't know if you can see down in here, but that's, I'm going to sew straight off the point of my binding. See there? So if you can zoom in on this, camera lady. Oh, I should have used black thread. But as you can see, hopefully see mm -hmm. it's a quarter inch away come down to a quarter inch from the edge and then sew straight keep your needle in the down position you'll rotate your mat and sew straight off the edge and then pull it out this is how we miter the corners so now once I pull it out then to rotate your mat so that you're going to be going the direction you need to go and then pull this up I like to hold my finger down here so I'm holding this in position where it was, where it belongs so it's nice and flat. And pull this up and you can see it's up against the seam line but this is a nice smooth long edge. Follows right in line with the edge of the mat or the edge of your quilt if you're doing a full size quilt. Then you simply fold this down so that it matches exactly here on this edge and not sure how well you can see this. But if you can look right here, it's adjacent to the edge, the upper edge of your quilt, or in this case, your little mug mat. Okay, so we're going to continue down this side of the mug rug, quarter inch away. I'm going rather slowly. Sometimes slow is good. I suppose if I was doing a big queen size quilt, I'd probably go a little bit faster. 
Okay, when I get close to the end, I wanna try to use this little notch on my foot. And most of your presser feet have a notch or some sort of mark that shows you where the a quarter inch is from the edge. And so I wanna get that right at the very edge of my piece, which I feel like it is now. And then I lift my foot, I turn, pivot, so that I can see that I'm gonna sew straight off the edge of this mug rug. Lift again, pull it out. Now you see it's coming out this way. I'm going to pivot this up and hold my finger down here on this side, pivot it up so that it comes up completely smooth straight edge there. You can give this a little finger press if you'd like. Hold it down here. Again, pull it straight down to you like this and the fold should be right even with the edge of your quilt or your mug rug. Then you place it back under your foot, resume sewing, quarter of an inch away, come down to the other side. Speed it up just a little bit. Okay, now we're almost to the end where I can feel my little groove in my foot right here so I'm going to pivot again sew off raise my needle turn it hold it down swing it back up come back down so that it's perfectly straight and this is where the tricky part comes with a mug rug because it is so small we want to sew down but you got to give yourself something to work with when you attach your ends because we want to make it appear as though you can't tell where I started and stopped on this. So I'm going to sew down only about to the width of my uh, binding. So I'm going to stop sewing about right here and I'm going to back stitch a couple stitches. Needle up and I'm going to pull it out. This time I'm going to snip my threads. Okay, so now we have this giant long tail. Now, on your if you were doing a regular quilt, I would try to leave about 10 to 12 inches in between. I usually just spread my fingers really wide, which is about 8 inches, and then add a little bit. And you want a tail on both ends. So I try to get this long tail out of my way. I'm going to lay that down perfectly even with the edge of my quilt or my mug rug. In this case, I'm going to bring my point. You see the edge and the point of my binding is right here. Now the actual point touches right there, but I'm going to go just about a squidge. To me, a squidge is like a sixteenth of an inch just a few threads above where that point is. I'm going to put my pin in there just to hold it. Okay. Then I turn it like this because I'm going to open this up. So I have this open. Now you see there's not much room here to work. So what I like to do is first make sure your pin is really in here because this is your important mark right here. So my pin is secure in my binding. And then you know those binding clips that we all love that are so cute? I use this to hold my mug mat out of the way. Because it's in, truly in your way. So then, take this piece, which is your, the one on your left, your long tail, and you want to open this up. Okay? And then you have your piece that was the other side. Now this is, it's really, honestly, it's tricky and kind of frustrating at times until you get the hang of it with these little bits on these mug rugs. On your bigger quilt, you've got lots of room to work and it's not bad at all. So the point where you want to sew, you want to put that right up here. And I take another pin and just pin it in place. Pin that part. And then you're going to come on down. And you, what you'll notice is, as you're coming down here, 
where your fold is, this fold of your binding here and the fold, the other one, you can line those up. See? So look at how nicely this will usually fall right into place on top of that fold. And put another pin there to secure it. Okay, and then just keep wiggling on down. And again, I did not draw my line exactly in the fold, but as you'll notice, this fold comes right down and comes to the very edge of my binding strip underneath. That's exactly what you want it to do. And again, pin that there. Okay, so now you're ready to sew this. Take out your marking pin which was the one you placed initially. Remove that so it doesn't get in your way. And then put your little guy under here. And line it up. Put your needle into your line. And then I like to go backwards a little bit. And then let's slow this down again so you can see it really nicely. So right along inside that fold on top of that black line that you drew. Be careful with your pins. I know we're always told to remove our pins, but sometimes you got to have those little pins. They're very important. Now in this particular case, as we come along here, you'll see that I didn't draw my line in the right spot, but you want to sew on that folded line. That's the proper place. So we're going to sew right in that fold. So even though I've done this a hundred times, you can see that I also will make little boo-boos. Okay, so then you pull this out. Just get your little threads cut. Remove your pins. And then I like to test this before I actually cut it off because I pull your little binding clip off or just snap it off like I did. So you can see, even though that's rather bulky under there right now, it does fit perfectly. Okay, so then you wanna go back inside here and snip this down to a quarter inch. Let me grab the big scissors. Oh. If any of you don't have these scissors, you would love these scissors. These are the Karen K. Buckley scissors. She sells them in different sizes. They are just little dreams to work with. At any rate, cut that off to a quarter of an inch. 